Hello, this is Nick, and I'm going to show you a little example of when something gets messy and should be cleaned up in terms of a refactoring. I have um, a little project here that I've been working on, and I would like to show you how it uh, could be cleaned up. So um, just as kind of an overall, uh, overall view of what this is, it's an aggregator for website, uh, RSS feeds specifically. And what I'm doing is um, going out, fetching some RSS feeds, and here's an example of them. Um, so just a couple of different ones here for various job sites. And in the view here, when a, the URL gets hit, I'm just basically looking for this parameter called site, which um, uh, right there actually. And then based on what the site address or value of that is, I go and do either a uh, JSON based fetch or an RSS based fetched. Um, when this started, what I did was I started with this JSON feed and it worked really well for me. And then I added another JSON feed. But as you can tell right here, I began to see into the future. I said a little, left a little to do saying this is terrible. And then um, eventually I got down here where I started getting um, these RSS feeds. Now the RSS feed is an XML based data format. It's not my uh, preferred way of doing things, but hey, it's how the world works sometimes. So, um, as you can tell, as the things began, as things began progressing, it just became a series of else if, else if, else if. And um, the sad part is, I have uh, at least two more that I want to add to this site. Uh, there happen to be RSS feeds, and so I'm just going to continue with this ugly-looking format, which makes me sad. Now, why does it make me sad? It makes me sad because we have a lot of repetition in here. Uh, I'm gonna pick on this one right here. We have this string here, which is uh, what we get passed in as the site value. And then we pass that, we copy that string again right here. Um, you can tell that was happening up here in these previous ones also. Um, as I began adding things in, I got smart and I realized, well, wait a minute, that string equals the word site, so I should just pass this, the word site in and my life would be a little bit better. It's still kind of ugly. Um, another thing that's ugly are these um, constants that I've defined. Now, these are coming from over here inside of this um, RSS feeds module. So what's wrong with this? Well, it's, it's kind of ugly in that every site, we're kind of, we've got a repetition going on here because I have the name of the site, uh, of the, of the site in the, the constant, and that just doesn't look well. And then if we scroll back up here to the imports, guess what? Every time I do something, I'm adding another line here. And that's just, that's going to get ugly fast uh, or continue to get ugly fast. And um, yeah, also we kind of have some bleed over. This is a view. So this is what the, um, uh, from a model view controller perspective, it should only be concerned with handling things that are coming in from the web page and going out. It shouldn't really know a whole lot of business logic. But if you notice, um, I've got process feed and then I've got RSS proc feed and that's a code smell. Uh, I've got two methods that are doing the same thing, but they handle different data types. So in order to get this in here, I had to get a little bit funky with my naming. Um, same thing with fetch feed and RSS fetch feed. So it's just starting to get really ugly. It would just be better if I had something that could just go and, hey, given a site name, uh, like remote Python, just go and fetch the data. So how do we do this? Well, let's take a look here. We've got um, one thing that we should note, note here is that this, uh, this pattern is repeated for pretty much every one of these feeds. So we're going to do the RSS one, for, RSS one first because it's the easiest. Um, we're going to ignore this one down here. This is kind of a debug one that I did where I could read a file off the disk to do testing locally. But we're more concerned with these um, active URLs, so we'll go with those first. So let's head over to RSS feeds. So um, what would be nice is if we could take that um, uh, this pattern that we have here of RSS proc feed and watch feed. I'm going to go copy that. I'm going to bring it over here and we're going to need to do something with that. So we're going to need a function. So I'm going to call it def um, uh, retrieve. Now I'm also um, 
the worst at naming things. So please do not, uh, <laughs> please learn from my example and don't do what I do when it comes to some of this. <laughs> also, because this is an act of refactoring, we'll, um, we'll go back and rename this stuff as necessary, which um, is a fun thing that you can do. Now, you'll probably notice that I put um, underscore here, and that's just because I think this is going to be a private method at the moment. Um, I'll explain why that is in a second. You'll notice that uh, PyCharm is also complaining. It's going to say that, hey, this is an unresolved reference. Well, it's an unresolved reference because that was the fancy name um, that I was putting into um, uh, the view page over here in order to disembag, or not disembag, well, yeah, disembag, you ambiguate, can you pronounce it, um, this RSS specific one from this one here, because they both had the same name, but they're in two different modules. So this is how you get specific on that. So what we can do here is uh, we're trying to make this more general. So we've now got a nice little function that um, we could pass this stuff into. So, hey, that's awesome. That's a first step. But over here, we still need to know what the, uh, the feed we're passing in and the site. So what I'm going to do is create a little um, thing called feed uh, list. And it's going to be a list. And what I'm going to do in here is create a tuple. And the first item in the tuple is going to be this name that I'm calling the site. So We'll do this work from home.io.dev. Copy that over to here. Get rid of the extra double parentheses or double uh, double quote marks. And so we're going to take that and then we'll just for I've already done this, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I'm not going to save you the pain of watching me fumble my way through this. But we're going to make a tuple of basically a key and a value. Hint, hint, that's where we're going with this. And down here, we're going to make something called um, RSS feeds. And it's going to be a dictionary. And this is where we're going to have some fun because we can, oops, need to move this down actually. Tap eight, so we need two spaces. Remove this down here. You'll understand why I did that in just a second. So, um, many of you may be familiar with the generator sent, or I'm sorry, list comprehensions where you can say X for X in some list where you have a, some list is a list and you go through and break things out or, um, or X, Y, and it, like, if this was a dictionary, this would be a way to iterate through it and get just the, um, let's say just the values out of it, put into a list. Well, the cool thing is you can do that with dictionaries also. So we can say key uh, value for key value in feed list. Um, yeah. yeah, we're creating a dictionary, so we need to have a, um, yeah, so we're going to go through the feed list. So it's going to be. Uh, so what we need is uh, what we're going to what we're the trick we're trying to do here is we're going to use a little tool called the partials from the func tool. So from uh, func tools import partial, which what this does is it allows us to create a um, a partial function, which is pretty slick. And here is how this will work. So we're going to have um, a key and a value. And the value is going to be partial. And when you create a partial, you're going to put in the function. So it's going to be retrieve feed. And you need to, then you pass in some key arguments. So feed equals, and we're going to, that's going to be the value here. And then we also need to pass in the site. If you notice, that's what these are. So the site's going to be the key in this case. And then uh, feed list. So I knew I'd remember it. Yay, me. I also learned how to spell yesterday. So, how you. Okay. So, what does this crazy bit of code do? What this is doing is it is going to create a dictionary, and the key is going to be, in this case, just uh, wfh.io.dev, and the value is going to be a partial function. 
So what a partial function is, is you are creating a function or creating a function and you're passing in some of the parameters, but you're not actually executing it yet. And in this case, uh, partials are really useful when you have part of the data you need right away, but you don't have all of it, but you want to not pass around like 50 arguments. You just want to go ahead and set the first 49 arguments. And then at execution time, when you get the 50th argument, then you can just add that to it. And it's a very short line. In this case, what we're doing is we happen to have both um, all the parameters that we need. So we're just creating the partial, go ahead and setting it here in this uh, dictionary. And then when the code runs, um, the dictionary will be created with this partial function. So we'll have a function object or function, but it doesn't actually get executed. It is a functional partial object, I believe is the correct term on that one. So how does this help us? This helps us tremendously because now we can go ahead and comment out this line. We can go back over to our views. And in here, now this is going to look a little bit funky. We're going to have some strange code here just for testing purposes in the beginning. So we can um, go up here. That is no longer needed, but now we need RSS feeds. And say, if site in RSS feeds. So that means we're going to be looking inside this dictionary and we can say um, func equals, um, whoops, RSS feeds. RSS feeds, I got git site. Now I'm using git instead of the uh, normal bracket thing because if this, if for some reason site isn't there, which it should be because we just did a check for it, it would return none. So um, it is, uh, it, it, this would allow you to do something like this. You could say if func, then go and do something. So this way you wouldn't attempt to do an operation on a, on a, uh, in, you know, a none object. But uh, in this case, we we're a little bit uh, on the safe side. We could just go ahead and say, data equals func, and then we can um, come down here and just completely delete that. And suddenly our code just shortened quite a bit. And if you'll notice over here in the uh, background, um, this is running on the uh, development app server stuff. So it uh, has been detecting file changes and reloading because I've got the uh, uh, debug. Oh no, well, no, I mean, that's what this does anyways, sorry getting confused thinking about other things. So big question is, I did all these changes. Um, did it actually do anything? Well, let's find out. We can go over here to run the local cron job and we are going to pick up on, um, we did work from home dot dev. So we can run that one. If I click on run now, we'll see over here in the background, it executed. But did it actually do anything? Well, it didn't crash, which is always good. It didn't pick up any new jobs, but that's probably just because I was um, busy doing something. But um, here, let's uh, put a print statement in here just so that way we can see what uh, RSS feeds looks like. So logging, uh, debug, and we'll do um, feeds just to make it explicit here in our logging statement, which is always good because you get too much garbage in there. You can... Um, lose track of what you're looking at and debug site is and um, I like the old school um, you know using percent signs I know that's not the new way in Python 3 but you know this, this code's still Python 2 because that's how the dev um, I'm sorry the app engine standard environment works so let's go ahead and rerun this and see what happens and boom, here we go. So right there, you can see there's the, the entire dictionary and you can see it's got a partials object instead of an actual function. So when it goes through and actually executes, it is um, calling this function, func, which it got from the dictionary and that allows it to do that. So that is really awesome. So let's go ahead and show you how easy it is to just keep on rolling with this. Super simple. All you do is just add a new dictionary. I'm sorry, a new tuple uh, to the thing. I probably shouldn't do the double quotes. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But let's go ahead and add in weworkremotely.com. And then we can go up here to weworkremotely.com's uh, URL. Put that there. 
and then might as well, hey, let's let's just go for it. We'll add another one because it's super easy at this point. Um, imagine, if you will, that these were um, not being added. I'm sorry, not being uh, refactored right now, but instead were being added to the system. It would uh, what you would see is just me adding in these lines, and it would be super awesome. So now these two are no longer necessary. We can come back over here, and these two lines are no longer, I'm sorry, these two items are no longer necessary. Notice we're already beginning to um, greatly reduce the amount of things that we need. And because we are handling these in here, we can now go ahead and just flat out delete these, um, which is awesome. And if we come back over here and run one of those, um, we work remotely. We should see, yep, partials object. And now if you notice, it's a lot bigger than it was before. Um, it still worked. It printed out what it was searching for. There were no jobs just because, again, I updated the database uh, right before I started calling this as I was practicing on it. And um, if we come up here, RSS proc feed. If we do a search for this, uh, RSS proc Feed. Okay, so it is being used in one spot, which is this development side. Um, I will go ahead and comment this out just for now. And if we come back up here, we're going to find out, hey, look, there's a whole bunch of dead code we don't need anymore. So we can now completely eliminate this. And you know what? It's really bad practice to leave commented out code in place. So we'll go ahead and delete that. Um, up here, we don't need these anymore, so we can do that. We could also um, get a little bit fancier here and make a little bit more descriptive name, but um, hopefully everybody is understanding that I'm using these underscores, so that way when I go over here into views, actually, let me. this is a really good point, let me uh, point this out. If I come over here and I do underscore, I can see it, but if I just type in feed, it doesn't show up because it defaults to not showing you things that start with a single underscore. Um, it's Python's little way of uh, trying to do um, basic uh, inheritance and permission type. I'm sorry, not inheritance, but uh, encapsulation. So in Java and C++, you'd have private and protected methods and public and all that stuff. Python doesn't really have that, but this is the um, IDE, uh, PyCharm's way of sort of implementing that. So. Um, yeah, if we check this out now, we've got a much shorter code base. Um, I can go through now and add in a few more RSS feeds. All I have to do is add it in here. And as long as they process correctly, which I believe they will, um, my code didn't grow very much. So let's um, come over here and uh, do a git status. We can see that if we do a diff. We've um, reduced the code. You know, we had to add some, obviously, but we've reduced it a lot. Uh, over here, we're only going to add in, we would have been adding in lines anyways for every time we added something, but now we're going to add in a little bit smarter lines. Over here, we can notice that suddenly the code got a lot shorter, uh, especially if I take out this debugging stuff, um, which I'm going to leave in there just for, you know, running it, making sure that everything's working correctly when I deploy this into production. But future um, sites that get added should not require more ads to my view. Instead, my view is going to be uh, nice, nice and shortened. And um, uh, pretty soon I'm going to go through and repeat this inside of the, um, the RSS, uh, I'm sorry, the JSON handler, because it's got a similar format. And I'll just be able to combine those dictionaries and just say, hey, you know, when a request comes in, get the site parameter and then just do this down here. You know, if site is in the feeds, then just execute. Otherwise, just keep on trucking. So I hope everybody found this useful and I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.